a device called a railgun. And it's a railgun because this projectile is going to slide across two rails. It uses a magnetic force on currents to launch projectiles at very high speeds. An idealized model of a railgun is illustrated 24.49. A 1.2 volt power supply is connected to two conducting rails and a segment of copper wire in the region of uniform magnetic field slides freely on said rails. The wire has a 0.85 milli, I have to make sure to convert the milli to the negative third, and has a mass of five grams, also have to convert that over to kilograms. Ignore resistance of the rails when the power supply is switched on. What is the current? Okay, so, we are just going to step through this and follow the steps they give us. So current is V equals IR, Ohm's law, and we're gonna rearrange that. So I equals, I'm gonna do little top things on the V. That way I know that's V for voltage, make it look like a capital. Voltage over resistance, R, and that's gonna be 1.2 over 0.85, times 10 to the negative third, because they give it to us in milliohms. And so we're gonna to go to our calculator, on clear, 1.2 divided by quantity, 0.85 times 10 to the negative third. I know there's probably an easier way to do it, exponential. I don't care. That's a lot of amps, especially for like a 1.2 volt battery. Yeah, seems reasonable, I suppose. Uh, one, four, one, four, one, two amps. One, four, one, two amps. Just shows you don't need a lot of voltage to get some crazy results. So what is the current? Bam, right there. Not too hard. Got it. Go team. What are the, what is... What are the magnitude and what is the magnitude and direction of the force on the wire? So current comes down this way. Um, I'm going to use force equals QE plus QV cross B. Um, this is the force on a particle, a charged particle. So there, we don't see anything about an electric field, so we're going to assume that's zero. So we have force equals QV cross B. For current, it's negative charges moving in the negative direction, but by convention, we assume that it's positive charges moving in the positive direction. So we have little positive charges going around in a loop here. And so we have the current going down. So we're gonna do cross product. So right hand rule, I know it's terribly hard. So we're gonna have velocity going down, magnetic field going into the board, and that's going to create a force going to the right. So this is going to be the force. Um, another way of writing this equation that you might be more familiar with is force equals I L cross B. They're exactly the same. Um, it's just one is simplified. One, I like to use Q V cross B when I'm thinking of particles moving and I L cross B when you're thinking of current moving, i.e. a bunch of particle charged particles moving together. So both are fine. Um, so what is, that's gonna give us the direction. Now for the magnitude, we're gonna use the second equation here. Uh, the force is going to be equal to the current, which is big, one, four, one, two, times the length of the wire, which is 0.15 meters, 15 centimeters, 0.15, times the magnetic field, which I think is like 0 0.8, 0 0.8. Check that to make sure, 0 0.8 Teslas, that's a pretty big magnetic field. So 1412 times 0.15 times 0.8. And I get 169. That seems pretty big, 169 newtons. So depending on how much, the, how much it weighs, which they tell us, that's a lot of force. Okay, so now, magnitude and direction of the force on the wire. What will be the wire speed after a slid a distance of six centimeters? So this actually harkens back to 
uh, kinematics equations. So I'm going to write them up real quick. A equals A for a constant acceleration. We have a constant force. So force equals MA, therefore we're going to have, and we have a constant mass. Therefore we're going to have a constant acceleration. V equals AT plus V naught. Er, that's terrible. I can do much better than that. Well, better than that. X, zoom in a little bit, equals one half at squared plus v naught t plus x naught. And I know it seems kind of tedious to write out all the equations. Um, I'll stick with light blue, but it helps me. Um, that way it helps you kind of see the bigger picture and keeps me from getting too confused. And then the fourth equation that I write, I know the first one is like, eh, it's not really the equation, it's just kind of the assumption. That's okay, bear with me. It's just going to be a combination of velocity and position. Uh, you solve for t, plug t into the bottom one, you get this, you get velocity final squared is velocity initial squared plus 2a delta x, where f equals ma. Therefore, I'm going to say that a equals f divided by m, which we can totally do. So what will be the wire speed after a slid a distance of 6 centimeters? We're going to assume it starts from rest. Did they tell us that? I don't know. Either way, I'm going to assume it starts from rest. So this is the equation we're going to use. Initial, initial velocity is going to be 0. Um, delta x equals uh, 0 0.06 because it slid 0 .0, uh, 6 centimeters. And so velocity final squared is going to be 2 times f over m times delta x. And we know that m equals 3 times 10 to the negative third, which is... No, 5 times 10 to the negative third. 5 times 10 to the negative third, because it's 5 grams. Yep, I think we can do this. I think we can do this. So we're going to do 2 times force, which is the previous answer, second answer, times 0 0.06 divided by quantity 5 times 10 to the negative third. And this gives us an answer of v final squared is 4,000 meters per second. I'm going to put on squared as well. I probably shouldn't have put it in units. It just makes it more confusing. So then we want to square root that answer, second square root, second answer, and I get 63.8. v final equals 63.8 meters per second, which is pretty quick, reasonably quick. So the idea here, did we do everything? Did we get it already? Nice, that wasn't too bad at all. Okay, backtrack what we did here. So we basically wanted to analyze a rail gun. Um, had a lot of assumptions. So first thing we did was we found the resistance of the rail gun, how much current we can pump through this projectile, which is a small, uh, copper bar. Um, we found that by looking at the resistance of that they gave us, resistance, resistance of the bar. We then found the force on the bar, which is F equals IL cross B. The cross product is redundant because the current, uh, the direction of current and the magnetic field are perpendicular. Uh, we do want to check the uh, cross product of L cross B though to make sure that it's shooting outwards and not shooting inwards because if the current was going the opposite direction it would actually pull the bar in which is not what we want terrible gun design and then finally they asked us all right what's going to be the speed of this wire after a slid distance of six centimeters and for that we just used kinematics equations and the force we got from the previous answer to find how fast it was moving so Hope that helped. See you in the next problem.